Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is One Pan Chicken Fajitas. But today I want to share with you guys a really fun weeknight meal hack. Well, really any night of the week meal hack. We're doing chicken fajitas all in one big pan, enough to make a dozen tacos with very few touches on the grill. And the great thing is if you do a little planning, a little prepping ahead, you can have all this ready to go and be eating within an hour of walking in the door. So let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to do is get our chicken into some marinade. I've got one pound of boneless, skinless thighs here, although you could use breasts if you like. Um, they're just going to tend to dry out a bit more. So I think thighs is a great option for this recipe and this technique. Um, if I'm planning to do this for a weeknight, I'm probably going to do this ahead of time. I'd go ahead and marinate the night before. They only need about an hour in marinade. So you can either do this when you get home, first thing, throw it into marinade, and then go start the grill, prep your veggies, or you can do all this the day before and just have it sitting and ready to go. Take it out of that marinade after an hour, throw it in the fridge overnight. So slicing all these about a quarter to half inch thick, somewhere in that range. They should have no problem cooking through in the amount of time it takes to cook the peppers and onions right alongside them. Let's throw this into our bucket and mix up our marinade. So the base of the marinade is going to be our lime jalapeno from Sweetwater Spice. I'm going to do a half cup of that. It's a concentrated uh, marinade, so we're also going to add a quarter cup of water. And then we're going to bump up the flavor with a couple tablespoons of soy sauce, as well as one tablespoon each of our Cattleman's Grill Mexicano seasoning and some chili oil. We'll just give this a good shake and pour it right over the chicken. Make sure everything's mostly covered and we'll give that an hour to soak. Next we're going to do a little knife work for our onions and peppers. Again, this is something you can do ahead of time so it's just sitting waiting for you uh, when you get home and you're ready to start cooking. I'm going to I mean, you can use any kind of onion you want. We're going to mix red and yellow today, and we need about two cups total. Next, we've got our peppers. Again, you can kind of mix and match whatever you like. Uh, I do like to kind of mix it up, one for the color, also for the texture, uh, poblano's got a little bit different texture than a bell pepper. And of course, slightly different flavors, though we're keeping them all mild. We'll take down these bell peppers as well. Looking for, once again, two cups peppers just like we had two cups of onions. So at this point you're going to grab your chicken out of the marinade and just throw it in with the veggies. Give this a good toss. Just get everything mixed evenly. And then we're gonna head over to the grill and throw our skillet or our cast iron pan in there to preheat for the next five minutes or so. But today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS 640S pellet grill. It's got the wood fired oven set up inside so we can get some really intense top down heat as well as cooking from the bottom of the pan. It's running at 500 degrees with hickory pellets, and we're gonna throw this Lodge bakeware pan in here to preheat. Now, you can use a sheet pan, uh, a, a half-size sheet pan that's just a little bit bigger than this. It will fit in there, but you're not gonna get the same browning, and a lot of times, it's so intense, the heat in there, that it kind of warps your pan, so they brown a little uneven. That's why I like using the cast iron. In order to get instant sizzle when the veggies and chicken hit, we're gonna preheat this just for three to five minutes. The pan's hot now. I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, 
mangalista pork fat to the surface. About a tablespoon. That's gonna add a little flavor and keep things moving around easy. Listen to that sizzle right off the bat. That's why we go for the preheat. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit Mexicano. Not too heavy. I'm going right back in. We're not even gonna look at it for 10 minutes. 10 minutes in now, guys. Take a look. You can see getting some browning at the edges of our veggies for sure, and our chicken. Just gonna give this a little bit of a stir so we can expose a little bit more of the, uh, the surface area, get a little bit more color. And at the same time, I'm gonna give this a spin because this back corner tends to cook just a little bit hotter than the front. And we'll go ahead and add just a little bit more seasoning. Not a lot. Just the stuff that we we hadn't hit before the stir. We're going to warm some tortillas up inside the grill too. Using these small little fluffy street taco sized flour tortillas. Throw a dozen of them in here. So paper, wet paper towel in there in the bottom. Um, sometimes that can kind of stick to the tortilla itself. So I'll throw some wax paper in there as well, but we're still gonna be able to create steam in this area, which is gonna soften uh, the tortillas up while they're steaming. Been about 13 minutes total. Starting to see just really nice browning. Typically what I'll do here is I'll try to find the biggest piece of chicken and get right in the center of it and get a, a reading on it. I mean, these are at 185. They're fully cooked. And that's why it's really important for me to use thighs because if you take everything to this color with chicken breasts, they're probably gonna be dried out by the end. But very little to no standing liquid. We've got nice color and texture on all of the veggies as well as that chicken. Look at that, it's beautiful crust. Let's pull these out and just let these tortillas steam for a couple minutes. This has been about two or three minutes now. You can see the steam coming out of there. I'm gonna open this up and make sure. Oh yeah, nice and soft, pliable, hot. Let's go build some fajitas. We'll lay out our tortillas and get them all layered up. You go easy on the first pass and then fill it in once everybody's got a little something. Now I'm gonna choose to top these off with a little Katija cheese, some, some fresh cilantro. Can't use my words today. Katija cheese and fresh cilantro. I'll throw a little wedge of lime on each one and let people squeeze them on individually. I think the only thing we're missing here is maybe a little hot sauce, and I'm ready to dig in. I'm gonna add a little cherry bomb today. This stuff is great. Fermented hot sauce with Fresnos. Squeeze a little lime on there. Let's do this. Mm. That marinade comes through right away. Big time flavor. Love the hot sauce and lime on top. Feels so fresh that way. And then you've got the supporting roll of all of those peppers and onions doing exactly what they gotta do inside of a fajita. That's a great bite. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.